just the steering angle alone, just the steering angle alone can also activate your vehicle control and stability system. And that brings to uh, mind an interesting case that I had a while ago, did not make a video on it, unfortunately. But what had happened, let's get this guy's car back together here, is this guy has a car with the anti-lock brakes. We're not on ice or anything. It's actually quite the opposite. We are on perfectly dry roads here, perfectly dry. And what had happened is the guy had installed a lift kit on his, uh, I think it was a Ford Explorer or something. He installed some kind of lift kit. The lift kit comes with uh, like taller shocks and stuff like that. What this guy noticed is after he did his car lift at random times, and especially if he you know, started going over 30 miles an hour, something would catch where his, it, it would just feel like his car drags down. And he didn't know if he did something where he's binding up the CV axles. Uh, he thought maybe it was something where he damaged the differential or something like that. The car would almost drag to a complete dead stop, absolute dead stop. What do you think he did that maybe caused an issue here? When I drove the car, I could absolutely 100% tell this was not a mechanical dragging or locking of the axles or transmission issue or something like that. This was clearly, clearly a combination of the engine slowing down and the analog brakes being applied. There was no question about it. You could absolutely feel it. And the owner didn't really describe that very well, and I don't think he knew that's what it was. But the vehicle absolutely slowed down and braked on its own. And it was not a mechanical interference or anything with something broken or binding or whatever. So does that help give a clue on what maybe he did that caused this? Well, it turns out what he did was he upset the steering angle sensor. One of the shocks that he replaced in order to access the bolts for that shock, he had to disconnect the steering, um, not the steering column inside of the car, but the steering column going to the steer box in the engine bay. So in the engine bay, he had to disconnect the steering column in order to reach the bolts to get to his shock here, his strut, technically. All right, well, when he disconnected it, unknowingly, he moved his steering wheel. And so when he realized that, that his steering wheel had moved, when he finishes his shock installation, he goes and he wants to center the steering wheel up, of course, so that he can reconnect the steering shaft here. Well, when he did that, he rotated the steering wheel to the left, uh, in the camera that's gonna look backwards, I guess, but, but to the left, he rotated the steering wheel to the left until the top of the steering wheel is straight, the wheels are straight, and then he goes ahead and locks it in. So the steering angle sensor with the wheel straight ahead, with the steering wheel straight and the wheel straight, the steering angle sensor is detecting one revolution of the steering wheel, a very, very sharp left turn. But the way I found it was once I suspected that there was some issue with the vehicle stability system, I started pulling data from the ABS module. And one of the first things I saw is sitting there with key on engine off, steering wheel straight, wheel straight ahead. The steering angle was way off of zero, way, way off of zero. Um, don't remember exactly what it was. Well, what was happening, of course, is as he's driving, the vehicle is going straight. The yaw sensor is going straight. But the steering angle sensor here is showing very clearly that this guy is making a left turn and a pretty sharp one at that. 
Well, what is the ABS computer going to determine of this? Well, the yaw is straight ahead. So vehicle is going straight ahead. We know that the direction of travel is straight. We also have a major, 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 major problem in that the wheel speed sensors are all the same. They are all showing exactly the same wheel speed. This is something that is impossible to happen if you're turning the car. Because if you're turning the car, the outside wheels have to travel faster than the inside wheels because they have a bigger arc to travel. So the outside wheels, when you turn, actually move faster. But we can see that's not happening. The other thing is if you're going 35 miles an hour and you're turning that wheel one full revolution to the left, we should have some kind of g-force, some kind of pull, some kind of something. Clearly, to the ABS module, this vehicle is in a wicked forward skid. And what it's doing is it's first and foremost lowering the engine speed, and it's also going to start applying braking. It was just trying to slow down the car almost to a stop. And of course, once I determined that was the issue and I disconnect this column, and I rotate the steering wheel one turn to set that SAS to zero and lock in the column again, problem completely solved. Understanding how the ABS valving and pump system work, understanding how the ABS communicates with these other sensors and how those inputs affect it, and uh, ultimately understanding the brake system, uh, just the hydraulics of the brake system in general, all of those are going to add up to the next video where we're going to discuss the different issues you can have with ABS brake system and what some of the things are that we would check and how to diagnose and examine those now that we know this background information. And then we will be ready to diagnose the car that's coming in that is a uh, ABS vehicle that has, uh, I think, multiple locking calipers on it, and nobody can seem to figure out why. Well, maybe now you have a lot more ideas on what we might look at uh, as a result of these first two parts. All right, we'll see you soon.